Hey guys, Ramon here from Project Put Under, Nestis by Day and DIY by Night. Today we're going to be shortening LED light Christmas light strips. Um, I've seen lots of other videos on incandescent light bulbs, um, some on the LED Christmas light switches as well, but they never really focused quite on what I was looking for out of a YouTube video when it comes to customizing the length of LED Christmas lights, regardless of where it falls. Now you're going to find lots of other videos out there that tell you to um, cut wherever there's two wires. And yes, that is all true. You can follow those videos and it will work. But in reality, when you are making something custom it rarely falls right in that spot where it's safe to cut which is where those two wires are so what i want to focus on is how do you make a truly customized length using christmas um using the led lights christmas lights regardless of where it, it lands and for me, it always lands where there's three wires where you're always told in the other videos, do not cut at those wires. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you can cut where there's three wires, you can have it work, and you can have a custom length LED that has a male and a female plug on both sides so that you can continue to string them on. So, let's... Um, get straight to it and show you how it's done. Okay, first off, let's plug these in. So everything is working. I'm just gonna pan around. You can see this PVC frame that's for my window. Um, so I'm customizing each PVC frame to fit in my window and I want the LED lights to be perfect around that the frame of the window. So that's what all of this is, but everything works. And these are the LEDs that are flat. Um, I have some other ones that have round, it doesn't matter, LEDs are LEDs. Um, and they have, you can see here, these resistors built in. I'm no electric electrician or electrical engineer or anything. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about resistance or loss of resistance. I'm only cutting off a handful here. Um, I do know that you don't want to cut them too short or you will blow it out because there won't be enough resistance and each LED will then be getting more voltage than it's designed to handle. So keep that in mind. Um, honestly, I tried with the first one and I knew that I was willing to sacrifice that set of LEDs if it didn't work, so if you're looking to make a short, um, a really short LED light strand from the original one, you may need to potentially sacrifice one to see will it work. For me, I have almost the full length of the LED strands, so cutting this off will not change any of that. Enough about that. Where my light strand ends, is right here. Let's see if I can bring you a little bit closer here. Get that out the way. Okay, so where my light strand ends is right here where there's three wires, all these wires, everything that you're not supposed to cut. So first things first, let's unplug that. We don't need that. All right. So this is what I did the very first time and what I would highly recommend you guys doing the very first time as well. Um, so I labeled each one of these wires so that when I cut it, if I could not make it work, I could solder everything back together and I would still have a working set of Christmas lights that I didn't just have to throw away. Um, and the way that I did that, um, so let me just verify, it should be between the blue and the yellow. So, just so you know, where there's only two, see how this light only has two and this light only has two, that wire absolutely could be cut all day, no problems. So, 
that is not really a wire that is of any concern. Um, but if it's your first time doing it, what I would do is put a little one mark here and a one here. And so when I cut in between, um, if it doesn't work, I could have soldered everything back together right there. So that's, that's these marks. These two are the wires that are going below it. These, these are your power wires. Um, so this is what's running the full length to connect all the power. So I'm trying to get the full length. So I'm going to be cutting mine right up against this bulb. So what I'm going to do is on one strand, this is at random. I have no idea which strand is, is which. I'm just going to make uh, two, two lines. And then on this side, I'm going to do three lines. I don't know if you're going to be able to see those or not, but you can imagine three lines and two lines. On the other side here, just in case I can't get this to work, the same wire that has three lines, I'm going to come over here and do three lines there. And then this wire here has two. Let's make sure I'm going to put two here. So if I needed to solder this back together, I could. Um, let's see. Let's see if you can see. You can kind of see the one that has three there and the two and the one. Okay. So with everything unplugged, of course, for me, I'm gonna go right up against that yellow and I'm just gonna cut all that out and make sure that we are in the right spot. Yes, we are. Cut that out. On that same strand that we just cut, so this, this strand here is now cut. This is part of what I wanna keep. I wanna keep this plug. So I'm gonna be adding a plug to the end of that strand that I just cut. And basically, I'm going to throw away everything else in the middle. Likewise, you're going to come over here. Now, this one, one wire is connected to that light. And one wire bypasses that light. This is one of those lights that have three. But none of that matters. And you'll see why. So, I'm just going to randomly put... Um, let's see here. A two dash there and a two dash here and then a one dash here and a one dash here. Okay. These marks will all fall in will all be important down the road. So I want this length to be as long as possible, so I'm gonna cut it right up against that light. And I'm gonna take this middle section and get rid of it. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what I'm left with. Those three wires that I cut and these two. So I'm just gonna unravel it. Next thing you wanna do, oops. Next thing you wanna do is, I think I picked these up at Harbor Freight, is um, expose some of the wire on all of these strands. So. I'm just going to, and I like to have about that length. Some people on other videos have a shorter length. Um, I find for me, it's easier to solder everything together at this length. Okay, so remember those markings I made earlier. So each one of these has either a three, a two, or a one. For me, when I'm doing this, I always do the number one that's attached to the light. So I try to do the same thing every time so that I um, don't mess up down the road. So for me, I mark it. The other ones that are late, marked two and three, those are arbitrary. I have no idea which wire is which. This is where it gets a little interesting and there's a little bit of luck involved 
But the good news is you can't mess anything up. So um, I'm gonna grab this plug. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're gonna take your number one that is attached to that light right here. This is what I have labeled as number one. You are going to randomly choose number two or number three. It does not matter. You will see why. And I'm going to show you both, me wiring it to both. I'm going to put those together. I have chosen for my sake, and I always remember, so you need to remember what you're choosing so that when the lights do work, you're like, okay, this is the combination. So right now I have one and two. That's my combination. As for these here, I guess technically you don't need to label them, even though I labeled them one and two. Um, I just kind of did that the very first time in case I needed to solder everything back together, I could. Um, so it doesn't matter which wire you connect on the plug side. So you can choose one, two, you can flop flip them all day. It doesn't matter. It will work no matter which wire you choose. So I'm going to randomly choose number one. So I have one, two, and then on the female side, one. Once again, on the female side, it does not matter. So I'm going to twist them all together. Got these little nuts here and twist everything together all right and then on the other side um, which is labeled number three here that I just put to the other plug so this is where a little bit of luck trial and error all comes into play that number one strand that is connected to this light bulb has to be connected to either the number two strand or the number three strand that I labeled. I cannot tell you which one it goes to. I am literally just trying it and trial and error. So I'm going to plug it in. Okay. From this resistor forward, all of these are on. That means that my lucky random guess of connecting number one to the number two wire was the correct combination so what would have happened if i connected the one and the three let's see so i'm going to disconnect this of course you want to make sure you unplug everything before and this is why it's good to label everything so that you can if if you weren't lucky the first time then um you will be able to figure mm -hmm. out which wire it goes to the second time Sorry about that. Okay, number one light, at least what I'm calling number one, connected to the light here. I am now going to connect it to the wire that has three marks on it. All right. Just to keep things the same, I am also going to reconnect it to the number one on the female side, which is what I had before. Once again, I've tried every combination possible. Feel free to do the same with the female side. It does not matter. Okay, twist those together. And then, so I have three wires there. And then I'm putting my number two and the number two together. Okay, so here's the beauty of this. When I plug this in, the lights from the resistor forward should not work they don't work. Everything else in the entire set is on. That other part fell down. So I know that the other way was right. I have ruined nothing. Nothing is destroyed. Nothing. It's not a big deal that I wired those the wrong way. It's not going to mess anything up. It doesn't mess the wires up. It doesn't blow the LEDs. It doesn't blow the resistor. Nothing. So just to prove that everything works, I'm going to connect my number one back to my number two. 
if I understand this correctly, this number two wire would I arbitrarily by random guess chose to be number two. I I don't know where that wire goes. I'm not even going to pretend to guess. Does it wire go all the way back to this plug or does it connect to another lighter resistor down here? I don't know. Just to show you guys that it doesn't matter which plug you use, the first time where I got all these lights to work, I used what I labeled number one. This time, I'm going to use what I'm labeling as number two. The important wires are what's connected to this light, number one, and what I happen to choose as number two. So we're going to choose, make sure it's the number two wire so we can show that it doesn't matter which side of the female plug you connect it to. And then we're going to go here. All right, so when I connect these, those lights should now turn on and they do. So the lights from that resistor forward are all on. And this is the last light that I need. Now let's make sure that this plug will continue to supply power to a following string of lights. I have this random bundle here. We just need to make sure this works. So this is where I made my connection. Power. Power, no matter which way you do it, which should be right, because these are non-polarized lights. So I have power down to here, everything works. I'm gonna unplug this. All right, and there you have it. This is how you can make LED Christmas lights customized to any length you need. You do not need to, well, I take that back. Within reason, you cannot make this super short. You don't believe me? Try it, blow out your LEDs. I mean, that's on you. Um, but it is possible to cut these where there's three wires um, and save your plug. I could have used any random plug. I happen to use the same plug from the same strain of lights. I could have cut this off another set of broken lights. It would not have mattered where this female side came from. Um, let's say I wanted to use that extra strand of LED lights that I cut out for something else. Well, I couldn't have because I don't have a resistor in there. So that's, that's a different thing. Without a resistor, you can't just plug those LEDs into um, 120 volt or you'll just blow them all. So the resistor is important. Regardless of that, let's just assume that you're going to do what I did and you're just going to scrap whatever LED strings that you don't need. Um, there you have it. So you're now going to see people do a variety of different things. Some people will get waterproof water resistance uh, wing nuts here. Um, some people will wing nut these together, squirt them with silicone. Some people will tie them together, fold it over and cover it with duct tape. Um, I like to do everything what I feel like is the right way to do things. And so I'm going to be soldering everything. At this point, guys, the video in essence is done. Um, if you know how to solder or if you're okay with using the little wing nuts and making the connections and throwing your lights out there, um, by all means, you do not need to continue to watch this video. I've given you all the information that is necessary. Just to end this part of the video, the wire that's attached to here, to that light, what I have chosen as number one, you just have to randomly choose which wired to connect it to and then trial and error if it's the wrong one it's the wrong one you haven't ruined anything just try the other one and you have them both labeled and you'll get it and all your lights will work or they should work they've worked every time for me and i this is my third time doing this and it's always worked um it does not matter which side you plug this on 
and that's it. I really hope this helps you guys. I have not found anything directly related to just normal standard LED lights that you can cut them at any, almost any distance, any length within the strand. Once again, there are resistors built in. There's voltage that if you cut it too short, you could blow everything out. My suggestion is to pick up a really cheap set or if you have an extra one and try the length that you need. Worst case scenario, you blow out the LEDs. It's not the end of the world. These things are cheap, especially if you buy them after Christmas and if you can hold out till after the new year, they get even cheaper. Um, but there you go. Now, if you are interested in seeing how I solder everything together to make this a very professional, clean, um, what should be a fairly water resistant, waterproof um, connection, then feel free to um, follow along and I'll show you how I solder everything together. All right, soldering these Christmas lights together. So um, I have here, I just picked this up on Amazon. You can look up any soldering kit. This is made by Weller. Um, these are cheap to keep your tip nice and clean. Um, this particular one came with a sponge. If not, you can just use your own sponge or damp cloth. Um, pick this wire up, um, soldering wire. It has flux in it and there you go. You can pause it and take a look. This stuff is fantastic. Awesome. And this is awesome too, by the way, if you need a soldering iron, I had one other one and it was awful. And this thing has just been fantastic. The other thing you need is I got this on Amazon as well. It has a variety of shrink tubing in different sizes. Once again, pause the video if you want to pick this one up. Um, I'll try to post links at the bottom, but um, I'm still working on all of that. So honestly, you can also go to Harbor Freight and just pick up a pack there. You don't need all the fancy colors or anything. None of those matter. I'm just going to be using black anyway. So I'm just going to pick up one of these. These are nice because they come in about, I don't know, one and a half, two inch lengths. Um, uh, they're one and three quarters, 1.75 inches. And then I'm going to pick up a slightly larger tube as well. So this is the way that I do it. Take the small one that's just going to go over the wire and I just cut that in half. Okay, so for the small ones, I choose to put the small ones. Okay, so number three is going to be by itself. And I am going to be putting number one and number two together. So this is where marking everything comes in very handy. So that I'm not like having to randomly hope I have the wires together. I know one and two is, is my combo. Huh. I need to go up to the next size there. All right. And go up the size on that one. Since I have to go over two wires, so go up one size there. Okay, so on the side that's connected to the strand, on what I have chosen number three, I just put a single one on that one. The other one that's one and two that I know need to go together, I push that heat shrink tubing as far as I can, which is going to be up against that light. On the female plug side, I place my larger tubing over that. And I just leave it the full length. Pick this little guy up at Harbor Freight 2, of course. Um, so now you just solder everything together. Once again, it does not matter which side on this. So I'm just going to do the, um, well, I'll just do the one and two first. All right. So I'm just randomly choosing a female side to connect it to. 
twist those together. And I am not the best at this. I am not a professional solderer by any chance. Um, in fact, I usually am pretty crappy at it, if you want to know the truth. But, you know, practice makes perfect. So, just to verify, I have three by itself, one and two together. Um, let's see if I can bring you a little bit closer here. And I'm just looking at it, making sure I don't have any random stray wires that are going to be poking out through my shrink tube. Um, oh yeah, that's nice and hot. Okay. So, I might be doing this wrong, don't judge me, but this is what works for me. I just let it sit on top. And honestly, I probably let it sit for longer than I need to, but I just like making sure. And I put it at the bottom and let it sit there for, I don't know, 20 seconds, give or take. And then they say that you should just touch it to the wire and then it should flow through. I've never been that lucky. So I actually just touch it to the soldering gun itself, which you're not supposed to do, but that's what I do. And then it all melts into the copper wire. And then I use this to clean off all that extra solder on the tip. And then you can also use this little, keep everything nice and, and clean. That's how you're gonna get good heat transfer for your next soldering connection. And you're done. So we're going to do the next same thing on the other side. So twist them and there you go. I don't know how well you can see that. Sorry, my hands are dirty because I've been working on Christmas lights this whole time. Um, do this together. All right. So once I get it twisted together where I'm happy, I just pinch those wires tight together. And then I place it in these little alligator clamps here. This thing from Harbor Freight came with like a magnifying glass or something. I just took all that off. I just need the, the two arms to hold these wires together. All right. I always just take my time, make sure that I'm happy with the connection. Once again, I am not a professional when it comes to doing this stuff and do the same thing again i wish i could tell you guys the magic number but like to hold it there or to look for something but i haven't found I just try to make sure the wires are heated through all the way. Once again, I jump start the process by touching it to the tip of my soldering gun, and then the rest just melts into the wires. And that's it. I'm going to turn that off and get that hot thing out of my way. I don't need that anymore. Um, you can use a hair dryer. I recommend a heat gun. These things, you can get them, or you can get anything cheap at Harbor Freight, and especially with the 25% off coupon. But um, this is just a heat gun. It is fantastic. So these should be nice and cooled off. So I'm going to take my heat shrink tubing, and do each one of these individually first. So I'm just trying to get it about dead center over there. And 
and then shrink it all with the heat gun. You don't need to go crazy. That alone is is very good. So you have the two wires here going into the one and then the one. But just for a little added protection, I'm gonna let that cool down for a little bit. I'm going to cover both of these up with this larger tubing. And that should help strengthen that connection and protect it. guys there you have it all in real time on soldering all of those connections and what it should look like when it's all done let's just verify that everything works <laughs> plug this in all the lights work up to the very end and all of these come in so we have power going through all right, guys, that's everything. Um, that is how you make a nice soldering clean connection. You can get these in different colors too. It doesn't have to be black or red. They have, um, well, those are probably the main colors, but I'm sure they have other colors out there. Um, but I like the black because it's just gonna blend in. You're not going to see any of that, especially at night. Now this isn't 100% waterproof, but it should be fairly resistant. Um, and then with that second, set of shrink tubing underneath this should, connection should be just fine you should still be able to bend everything move everything around um, make your turns and everything and it be just fine now would i recommend bending it right there no of course not but we all know that well i hope this video helps you guys out there I'm sure that i'm not the only one that's wanted a video specific to these just classic simple LED Christmas lights and being able to customize the length to anything you want within reason as I've discussed before. If you like this video, if this video helped you out, please hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button for what as well. Leave a comment in the section below if there's something you would have done better if you've done something like this before. If you're an electrician or an electrical engineer and you can tell us uh, more about uh, how these resistors come into play and how short we can actually cut this specific kind of LED Christmas light string. Comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from you guys and to learn um, more about this. I may in the future play with the idea of how far can I go? How much can I cut off until you can't do it anymore? But for me, um, this is all I need, so... I'm not going to go wasting LED lights right now. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one.